Now that sounds pretty cool, dual injectors for ultimate control, but let's get back to reality for a second. We've been talking a lot about naturally aspirated engines. Are ITBs even a good fit for boosted applications? That's a great question and one we get a lot. While we typically see ITBs on naturally aspirated engines, they can definitely be used with forced induction, although it's less common. Why is that? Is it just a matter of complexity or are there other reasons? It's partly complexity, but it's also a question of whether the benefits of ITBs outweigh the challenges in a boosted setup with a turbocharger or supercharger already forcing air into the engine. Those gains in throttle response and top-end power from ITBs might not be as noticeable. So it's like trying to add sprinkles to a cake that's already covered in frosting might be overkill. That's a good way to put it. But there are some examples of manufacturers using ITBs on turbocharged engines like those Nissan RB26 and SR20 DET engines we talked about earlier. They were going for even sharper throttle response, even with the turbo in the mix. Interesting. So it seems like ITBs on a boosted engine could have benefits, but it's not as straightforward as with naturally aspirated applications. Right. It really comes down to your goals and how much effort you're willing to put in. Now let's switch gears a bit and address some common questions we get about ITBs. One we hear a lot is, can you run individual O2 sensors in each exhaust runner for better data logging and tuning? That seems like it would be helpful, especially with how important it is to get each cylinder running smoothly with ITBs. 